This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Remember what was in the bubbler? It has the uh, vodka in it, right? That, that has all the product. All right, so here's my apparatus. You can see that's the stuff from the uh, bubbler and the stuff I distilled out from the uh, that, you know, the trap that had all the ethanol mostly in it. We found out there was only about a milliliter of set of aldehyde in there. You see I have it set up with two vigorous columns goes to the top and there's my receiving glass. I basically I'm just just gonna distill it over, not super slow. Uh, anything that go you know from twenty degrees up to uh, seventy degrees Celsius. Then we'll distill it one last time. Because right now, you know, there's say two hundred and fifty, three hundred milliliters or whatever in that liquid. Only a little bit of it is uh, set aldehyde. But once we distill it, now, you know, half of it's going to be a set aldehyde. So when we come back down to distill it again, it's going to be real easy to get nice, pure set aldehyde. Okay, let's recap. I distilled ethanol. Although I used an azeotrope, you should use pure ethanol. Uh, and it went into a trap, a bubbler that had vodka in it, and a third trap. We learned that the third trap doesn't really catch anything. It's useless. The first trap caught mostly high-boiling stuff like ethanol. It didn't really catch that much. Usually, and I did about 10 experiments with this, okay? I'm going to go over all my mistakes and how I can improve it and get a better yield, that's for sure. Because um, I know everything to get you a worse yield. So first of all, let me say that uh, I did do 10 experiments and I filmed a little bit of each one. So if things don't sound right, uh, sometimes it's because I, it was before the, like, for instance, there was three, I had three fires, okay, three leaks, all right, and I say in the one part of the video in part one that I only had one leak. Uh, that was because that was uh, uh, like the ninth time I did it, and then the tenth time I did it, I had, uh, you know, three leaks all at one time, man, they all caught on fire, okay. And what happened was it just basically, you know, if you had a big candle or, you know, like a plumber's torch, you know, about that size of a flame caught on fire, and I just basically blew it out and turned off the my heating source, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you, you think that the the, it, the flame didn't catch the, the stuff on fire. It was the heat tape. The heat tape was so freaking hot that, you know, as soon as the, I got a leak, it would touch that and, boom, catch on fire. Uh, it wouldn't go inside because of the pressure, you know, I mean, you have a, just like a lighter. Why doesn't a lighter blow up? Well, because you got pressure pushing the gas out. And the same thing happened here. Keep in mind, that's only for small leaks. I mean, if you have a big leak, it's going to, the fire is going to go inside the apparatus. That's for sure. So keep that in mind. This is not a, you know, a very safe experiment. Uh, so I just blew it out and I redid my plumber's tape or pushed the joints together. And uh, basically I, I, I reason that to be because instead of each experiment, me taking the old Teflon tape off and making a new gasket, you know, and wrapping it all up uh, with new stuff, I just kept using the same stuff over and over. And that's a bad idea. That will definitely, you know, cause fires after a couple experiments you know what I mean um, so I have two fires at the steel head where it goes right into the furnace um, but like I said it was just like a you know a big candle 
and I just basically blew it out like you would a candle and redid my stuff. So keep that in mind. This isn't something that, uh, you know, if you don't have a lot of ex experience, I wouldn't start out with this, this experiment, you know what I mean, with chemistry. I, I'm scared uh, of doing this stuff. It's high temp. It's, you know, it's just so high temperature. It's unreal, man. And uh, everything catches on fire when it's, when it's that high of a temp. It don't matter what it is, you know what I mean? So especially if you're trying to upscale it, uh, you know, I'm just doing little small amounts. Okay, but the, anyways, to get into the experiment, I used like 400 milliliters of uh, ethanol on that first experiment, right? And I only got 8 milliliters of product, but it was super pure because after I took my couple milliliters of from the trap that I got of a set of aldehyde, and then I remember I distilled out the a set of aldehyde out of the bubbler stuff. Well, first I, you know, I mixed it into the bubbler stuff. Then I distilled out the set of aldehyde from there. Then I got about 20 mils or something like that. Then I took that and took two Vigorex columns and distilled it down to about 10 mils. And then I distilled it again down to about 8 mils. So, and I used two Vigorex columns each time. So it's super pure came over at the exact temp there was no you know it was just a perfect distillation per you could tell it was pure stuff uh and i did that on one other experiment uh most likely the second time i did it and then it went downhill from there my whole thing was that the, after the first experiment was i was thinking well i need to you know my tube isn't long enough to get this vapor up to 300 degrees this is an endothermic uh reaction so it's going to suck heat out and get cold as you do the reaction so you, you got to keep adding heat um so you want the vapor to be hotter than the actual copper you know what i mean and you want the copper to be between uh i say in the video 300 celsius i think that's a little bit off i'm going with 250 to 290 celsius i say in the video 300 celsius i think that's a bit high uh so that's one thing i'm going to change when i redo this experiment is i'm going to take that down but the whole point is, is if you want say if i did want it at 300 just use a nice easy number uh celsius the uh copper well then i have to have the vapor coming through hotter because as the reaction goes on it's gonna cool it down like you know so i want the vapor to come in at like 350 celsius um my whole thing was first of all i put that steel wool i mean not steel wool that glass wool quartz glass wool and i just filled up half of my tube thinking well that will block it off and the steel wool will get up to 350 and so the vapor will easily touch something that's 350 C you know halfway up the t furnace tube it'll definitely get up to temp but what happened was it just burned all the all the uh, wool glass wool just like burned it turned into nothing it disintegrated uh, after the first time I tried it so my next attempt and I think that was okay that was when I got the eight but that was i got eight milliliters on that but i only used like 200 mils of ethanol instead of 400 in the first one so i actually did better on the second one uh so i did realize that oh uh i got eight milliliters this time and eight milliliters la last time but i only used half as much ethanol this t this time i only used 200 mils instead of 400 so i got an improvement but the thing is, is that the steel wool, I don't know how long it lasted. I had the furnace tube covered up. Uh, and if it burns it all up, you know what I mean? I wanted to do something else. So I figured I'd just fill it all up with copper. You know, I actually had copper on activated carbon. Activated carbon that I got at the fish store where you buy fish stuff at. Uh, you know, like fish tanks and that. And uh, I just mixed it together with some copper. Uh, so I just filled the whole thing up <coughs> with that, you know what I mean? The, the copper on cop on carbon. And, uh, 
figuring that it would have to touch that and you know before it got left the thing it would be up to temp to do the do the reaction that was a big mistake uh, because what i noticed was each experiment that i did with it that long it, it just i got less ethanol and i got more reaction you know what i mean i got more byproducts but i didn't really get any acetaldehyde i could smell it but i'd only get like a mill you know what I mean? If that, some of them I couldn't even, you know, extract the mill out. And uh, that was because everything is getting over oxidized. And you will start making ethyl acetate, uh, diethyl ether. Um, there's all these uh, things that I started making that were uh, below the boiling point of ethanol, but above, you know, the 20 degrees or whatever it is for acetaldehyde. Now I'm going to go over uh, 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 supports that you can put the copper on. I'm going to also tell you different metals that you can mix with the copper so to cut down on poisoning, uh, centering, uh, coking. All these things deactivate your uh, catalyst and uh, shorten its lifespan. Uh, but there are ways that you can activate your catalyst. You know what I mean? Uh, more surface area. Uh, put it on a, a catalyst support. Um, like silicon dioxide or aluminum oxide. Uh, you know, alumina or silica. And uh, you can uh, prevent centering. You can have more surface area. Uh, I'll go into all this in, in the probably part three and how to make you know because you can't you, you're not supposed to just go get some alumina and put the stuff on you need gamma alumina that's a meta uh, a meta phase uh, <coughs> form of alumina if you just go get regular alumina like alpha alumina it's not going to be, it's not going to have all the surfaces and crevices that you need to increase the uh, surface area of your catalyst. And I'll also go into how do you, how do you put, I finally figured out, how do you put the catalyst on to the catalyst support? I figured that out too and I'll go into that also. And uh, <coughs> I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over a couple things here. First of all, when I what I'm going to do uh, next when I next time I open up my lab, is you can see up on the picture there how I have the fire on the top left hand corner of the screen. I am going to get some water, put it in there, and then I'm going to get a like a uh, aluminum or a stainless steel or even an iron uh, pipe, and I'm going to connect it. The same way I did with the, you know, I'm going to use plumber's tape to make a gasket and, you know, cram it in so that it's all nice and airtight. And I'm just going to boil, and I'm going to put a thermometer, you can see at the end of the tube, right, the steel tube or whatever. I'm going to put a thermometer in there and check what, and I'm going to boil off the water and see if I, how hot I can get the water with the heat tape that I'm using. Like, do I need a foot tube? Do I need two feet? Do I need three feet? Uh, how long exactly does that tube have to be if it's empty to get the water up to 300 degrees Celsius? Okay, that way I can just prove to myself instead of you know guessing. I don't know if it's if the if the vapor is actually up to temp. That's a lot of the reason why it wasn't working on the first two reactions or say the first reaction uh, but it was working it was getting hot enough on the other reactions but I'd had the whole furnace tube filled up and it was just overreacting you know what I mean so what was the point in that I need empty tube to get to see what the length is to see how much length of tube I should use you know with my quartz furnace you know what I mean <coughs> 